better known as Hank in some circles, called other things in other circles. Uh, I'm going to read a couple pieces from Now This, the literary magazine of Princeton, New Jersey. Twenty-nine, ninety-one, ten fifty-five p.m. This is part of a journal entry. Slow day at the track today. My damned life dangling on the hook. I am there every day. I don't see anybody else out there every day except the employees. I probably have some malady. Saroyan lost his ass at the track, Fanti at poker, Dostoevsky at the wheel. And it's really not a matter of money unless you run out of it. I had a gambler friend once who said, I don't care if I win or lose, I just want to gamble. I have more respect for money. I've had very little of it most of my life. There are only two things wrong with money, too much or too little. Well, I suppose there's something out there we want to joggle ourselves with. And you get the feel of the other people, the desperate darkness, and how easy they toss it in and quit. The racetrack crowd is the world brought down to size. Life grinding against death and losing. Nobody wins finally. We're just seeking a reprieve, a moment out of the glare. Shit. I just burnt the end of my finger with a cigarette as I was musing on purposelessness. That woke me up, brought me out of this sart state. Hell, we need humor. We need to laugh. I used to laugh more. I used to do everything more. Now, I am writing and writing and writing. The older I get, the more I write. Dancing with death. Good show. And I think the stuff is all right. One day they'll say, Bukowski is dead. 
Then I'll be truly discovered and hung from the stinking bright lampposts. So what? Immortality is a stupid invention of the living. You see what the racetrack does? It makes the lines roll. Wax, lightning, and luck. The last bluebird singing. Anything I say sounds fine because I gamble when I write. Too many are too careful. They study, they teach, and they fail. Convention strips them of their fire. I feel better now up here on the second floor with the Macintosh, my pal. And Mahler is on the radio. He glides with such ease, taking big corners. One needs that sometimes. Then he sends in the long power rises. Thank you, Mahler. I borrow from you, and I can never pay you back. I smoke too much. I drink too much. But I can't write too much. <laughs> it just keeps coming. And I call for more, and it arrives and mixes with Mahler. Sometimes I deliberately stop myself. I say, wait a moment. Go to sleep, or look at your eight cats, or sit with your wife on the couch. You're either at the track or with the Macintosh. And then I stop, put on the brakes, park the damn thing. Some people have written that my writing has helped them to go on. It's helped me too. The drinking, the riding, the horses, the eight cats, my wife. There's a small balcony here. The door is open and I can see the lights of all the cars on the Harbor Freeway South. They never stop that roll of lights on and on. All those people, what are they doing? What are they thinking? We're all set to die, all of us. What a circus. That alone should make us love each other, but it doesn't. We are terrorized and flattened by trivialities. We are eaten up by nothing. Keep it going, Mahler. You made this a wondrous night. Don't stop, you son of a bitch. Don't stop. Dear Sir, thank you for your manuscript, but this is to tell you I have no special ends with any editor or publisher, and if I did, I would never deem to tell them who or what to publish. I myself never mailed any of my works to anybody but an editor or a publisher. Granted, these works came back for decades. I still never considered mailing my works to another writer. Believing this writer might help me get published. And although I have read some of what you have mailed me, I return the work without comment, except where did you get my address? And the effrontery to mail me such obvious crap. If you think me unkind, fine. And thank you for telling me what a great writer I am. 
now you'll have a chance to reevaluate that and to choose another victim. Thank you for your camera work, Linda. My wife, Linda Lee Bukowski, has done a wondrous work here. Thank you very much. Here she is. See you later. Bye. This is our cat, Ting. <laughs> the right other Encore. Well, all right. I feel like I've been sitting in some jazz club for six or seven hours smoking and drinking beer. But anyhow, Encore will be. Hope you're still with us. The Eight Count Concerto. The lid to the gray jar opens and out tumbles a rubber Christ child. I throw it to my cat who bats it about the air, but soon tires of the lack of response. It is near the end of February in a so far banal year. Not a damn good war in sight anywhere. I light an Italian cigar, it's slim, tastes bitter. I inhale the space between continents, stretch my legs. For it all, it's moments like this, you can feel it happening, that you grow partly into something else, strange and unnameable. So when death comes, it can only take a part of you. I exhale a perfect smoke ring as the soprano sings to me through the radio. Each night counts for something, or else we'd all be mad. Here's another. Forget it. It's a farce. The great actors, the great poets, the great statesmen, the great painters, the great directors, the great loves. It's a farce, a farce, a farce. History and the recording of it. Forget it, forget it. You must begin all over again. Throw all that out, all of them out. You are alone with now. Look at your fingernails, touch your nose, begin. The light flings itself upon you. Thank you, that's it. <laughs>